The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Up next on the Believer's Walk of Faith. If you're going to live and you say, offense is going to come. So I'm saying all of this now that if you've got uh, all kinds of anger and all of that, you are not going to stand before Jesus and Jesus asks you, what did they do to you? He is not going to consider it. He's going to consider what did you do for them? Now, what did you do? Jesus is no longer coming down to our circumstances where circumstances seem to be dominating. But he's now calling us up to actually a place where we've been designed that we dominate circumstances. All right? So he's not going to just pet us anymore and say, well, what did they do to you? He's going to say, get up and come on up here and let's get something going. All right? Now, also that he wants us to do things by the method of the spirit. He wants us to have a spiritual process in what we do. This 4D is new, all right? Because what we're used to doing is thinking it out and then go work it out and so forth and so on. It's not the process anymore. The process now comes out of your spirit. And that's where faith comes out. And not one ounce of faith comes out of your mind. So your faith comes out of your spirit. No, I want you to start using your spirit Amen. and training your spirit versus trying to manage your life with your mind. Got it? Now your mind does play a part because you're not going to walk on the street, but, but your spirit is going to be the process that you're going to use to make things happen in your life. No, let's look at this. A good man is found in Matthew's gospel, chapter 12 and verse 35. NIV, ready, read. All right, now, a good man brings forth good things out of the good stored up in him. An evil man brings forth evil things out of the evil stored up in him. All right, let's see some good things stored up in somebody. Here is Jesus going with the disciples for three years. He's sending them out now. Look at Matthew's gospel, chapter 10 and verse 7 and 8. And I want you to see that. Ready? Read. All right, that's enough. So now they're going out to do good because good has been sown in them. All right, now um, let's look at another one, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. And so Dr. Martin Luther King is saying, hey, wait a second, we're not going to have violence. This is going to be a non-violent protest, which is legal, by the way. All right? It is legal. And that's what he's going to have. So he's got good in him and good came out of him to the point that he changed the the laws, the civil rights laws came in and so forth. So I'm just saying to you, if you got something good in you, something good is going to come out of you. You got it? But an evil man, out of the evil treads of the heart. Now, evil. Don't say treasure, say deposit. So something has been deposited in somebody that is evil. And now they're going to give it out. Look at Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15. Ready, read. All right, now you can see that a seed will bring a tree and a tree is bearing fruit. And when this person speaks, 
It's called the fruit of their lips. Yeah. Come on. And so as they speak and speak something that's grown up, yeah. if it's bitter, then it's going to make other folk bitter. bitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, your cousin going to hear what you're saying. And if they receive that fruit, they're going to think bitter. Yeah. And you're going to wonder where it came from. And notice what these leaders did. They poisoned a whole nation. Yeah. Yeah. They poisoned a whole nation. Yeah. They spoke evil. Evil is something that's contrary to the word of God. What God said, that's right. That's good. That's right. So they spoke it contrary. Now here's what happened to the leaders. Let me just get that first. Look at verse 37 of Numbers chapter 14 and just look at that. Ready, read. Even those men See, they, they died early. Come on, They're gone. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Speaking evil. Right. Leadership. They're going to be more harshly judged. And I'm saying that the leadership sometime of the African-American community yes. is speaking evil. Yeah. And they're provoking uh, rate, uh, racial, racial tension conflict. and so yeah. forth and conflict yeah. when God doesn't bless that. That's right. Yeah. That's not what he blesses. I don't care how you feel about it. He said, vengeance is mine. I don't care how you feel about it. And these are Christians. I'm not talking about the unsaved because they can't guard themselves. But these are Christians. These are some churches. And they've got people because they spread it. Yeah. And now the congregation yeah. is mad Come on, because the devil's getting them to bring a racial divide yeah. in the nation when that is not what it takes for God to bless you. He can't bless that. He can't bless it. He's telling you, and Martin Luther King said it, you got to love your enemies. He said, God is the judge. He'll make it right. What you got to do is be right. And I'm saying, when you preach this, some of them rejected and so forth, but you better watch yourself because if you're a leader, that, that a judgment is first going to start in the house of God. And I'm saying ministers are preaching stuff that is causing division among a nation that God's hand is on. Right. This nation has still sent out more missionaries than any nation in the world. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And I'm saying this, that the, 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 the high idea about is defiling the whole thing. All the people got mad and none of them made it into Canaan. Not a one. Only Joshua, come on, and Caleb made it in. Everybody else died. God is not putting up with that mess much longer. You got to hear this. This is one nation, what? Under God. And God wants it that way. Now, you got a bunch of black people that thank God that we become some distance. But when you do that, you kind of almost take a step back. You can't do that. Look what he says in Luke chapter, do you believe the Bible? Luke chapter 17, verse 1. This is talking to Christians. I know I'm not talking about the, somebody who's not a Christian. I'm talking about the Christian because the church supposed to lead the way. Right. Ready, read. This said he unto the disciples, it is impossible, but that will come. It's impossible. If you're going to live and you say, offense is going to come. That's right. That's right. So I'm saying all of this now that if you've got uh, all kinds of anger and all of that, you are not going to stand before Jesus and Jesus asks you, what did they do to you? He is not going to consider it. He's going to consider what did you do for them? Now, what did you do? Say amen. And it must be carried out now because that's holding back the blessing. God wants to put you on top. He can't put you on top with that kind of attitude. You know, Denzel Washington was in a movie and a movie was called The Hurricane. Here's what he said. 
Hate put me in here in jail, in prison. But love's going to get me out. All right? So look at Joseph. Here's your example. Joseph was threatened to be killed by his brothers. Am I right? Then they sold him as a slave. Am I right about that? Then he got down there with Potiphar and started doing well. And Mrs. Potiphar came after him and he rejected her. And then she told a lie on him. Then they put him in prison. That's called injustice. So he, he suffered rejection from his family. He suffered injustice from the place that he was employed. Then he ended up in prison. But he never got bitter. Glory to God. And I'm saying you're going to have to forgive them by faith. I know you don't want to forgive them. You forgive them anyway. I'm going to forgive him. If that's the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to forgive her. I'm going to forgive you holding on to that. And that man walked out on me and these kids. I know that was wrong, but you got to forgive because when you forgive, you can be like that woman that had two kids about to be taken and she went to the man of God and got a prophetic word. And the next thing you know, she was the richest woman on the block. She was an oil baroness. Why? Because God could get it to her. But bitterness puts up a shield. And a lot of times black people are so bitter they don't even want to hear nobody talk like this. You better hear somebody talk like this or your Christianity is going in vain. You're going to get up before Jesus and I'm telling you, you're going to bring up everything. You can't do that. You got to say, I'm going to forgive him. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to say, start singing. I'm going to forgive him. I'm going to forgive him. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, I know this is hard. Some people, it's hard to take. But if I don't tell you this, then I'm not helping you. I'm going to tell you what's going to make you rich. You forgive them people and watch God take you off. He's going to reward you just for what the step that you made of faith. Say amen. All right, let me just finish. (laughs) Woo, 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 woo. Meditation brings revelation that will cause your inheritance to come. You're after your inheritance. And revelation is what you need. You need that revelation. Now, here's one of the things I did is I was, these are called seeds of dominion. Say seeds of dominion. All right. You cannot get to your destiny without having dominion. Okay, let me see what I'm trying to see what I make this out to be. Um, I was working for IBM. I knew God was calling me to meet to, to ministry, but I just couldn't leave. One, the money was sweet. And I had all my friends. I'm saying, well, man, you know. So I decided I got to get out of here because this is starting to bother me. So then I heard a man preach on seed time and harvest. Mark chapter 10, verse 29 and 30. Let's all read it together, please. Ready? Read. And and Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man. This time. All right. And he goes back through them. So I took that, put it in my spirit. It grew up inside of me and I had dominion over the forces that were trying to keep me there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Isn't that powerful? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So let's say it's time for the shopping mall. I said, God, how am I going to get that shopping mall? Now, I got to take dominion over it because it's part of my inheritance. So I took shopping mall seed. God gave me Joshua 1, 3, every place, come on, the soles of your feet, I have given. What am I going to do? I need an airplane. I need some dominion seed. So he gave me Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 20 that that a bird of the air shall carry. Now, you see what I'm saying? I'm saying if you want to get your inheritance, you need some seed. And you take that seed and you make Meditate that seed and that thing grows up inside of you and nothing can stop you now because his dominion, he is, Lord have mercy, his kingdom rules, come on, over all. Say amen. Well, I'm preaching good tonight. So I don't care what it is, I don't care what it is that you're in need of, it might be being blocked. I'm talking about blocked in terms of a relationship, blocked in terms of your new job, blocked in terms of your uh, company taking off, blocked, but you can unblock it. Find yourself some seed. So here they are going and they're on on the ship and Jesus said, let's go to the other side. Mark and chapter four and verse 35 through 41. So they start out to the other side. Now they're going to the other side. All of a sudden, here comes a storm. Jesus is asleep. Now, while Jesus is asleep, I'm sure they're bailing out water because this storm is too much for these experienced fishermen. Say amen. Amen. Then they cried out to Jesus, hey, what, don't you care that we're about to die? He got up without saying anything to them. He spoke to the wind. And see, it said, peace, be still. And there was a great calm. Why? Because of dominion. Well, here is the sea. Look at Psalm 89 and verse 9. And let's read that together. Ready? Read. Now, you see that? Now, how do you get that? You get that from God. Now, watch this. I'm about to say something here that you got to hold on to. I preached the other day on discernment. Discernment. Now, when, (laughs) when the Syrian army was going to attack Israel in 2 Kings 6, what happened is a prophet told Israel which way the army was going to attack. And the king of the Syrian, or whoever it was, the enemy, he thought somebody was telling Israel who was a traitor in his camp, but they weren't. God was telling them. Now, what is discernment? Discernment is a God-given ability to have knowledge or facts that is beyond human ability or human knowledge. It's beyond, it's it's spiritual knowing. And so God, I told you on Sunday, you can get so developed in discernment so you can walk up some stranger and almost know his name. When I go down to Jamaica or something, somebody, hello there, preacher. Yeah. I said, hey, yeah, how you doing? I said, you know me? No, sir. I said, ever seen me before? No, sir. I said, how do you know I was a preacher? Well, I can see it. It's all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying that same discernment goes deeper. Because yeah. Jesus said, Zacchaeus because he discerned it. I'm telling you, it says he knew what to do. Why? He discerned it. And God can show you that day there's going to be something coming your way. And if you've got discernment, you can pull it off in the morning. And so when it comes your way, you've got a seed of dominion. Boy, y'all got to get this, man. You'll never lose another fight. Yes, sir. I said you'll never lose another fighter in Jesus' name. 
So, this will work for anything. It doesn't make any difference. Stock market, it works for anything. God, over in different countries, they've got different ways of doing this, but it won't reach the way God can do it. You got something over in India, astrologers, and they advise the rich people and tell them what it, you got over in uh, some of the other country. They try to imitate it because that's Satan's job. Yes, 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 yes. But remember, Daniel was 10 times better. They can't reach you. Amen. Amen. you we're coming into a time that the church is going to know what to happen what's going to happen before it happens. Amen. I'm preaching good now. Now you just take that what I got because you can go to sleep at night, put something in your spirit and the Holy Spirit will start a search. I mean, the, the, your spirit will start a search and the Holy Spirit will give in contact of what the wisdom is to solve that problem yeah. and you wake up in the morning feeling good about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, yeah. Praise God. Amen. I pray for discernment to come on your life Amen. in Jesus name that you'll never be deceived again by the devil in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for the spirit of discernment Amen. to rest upon you. I pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to rest upon you, Amen. that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. Yes. From this day forth, yes. you're going to see things that people can't see Amen. and go places that other people can't go. If you can see the impossible, the, the invisible, you can do the impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blessed by today's message, order today's four-part series, Faith to Dominate Your World in its entirety on CD or MP3, on DVD or MP4. To order, contact us at 1-800-711-9327 or online at billwinston.org. In Faith to Dominate Your World, you'll learn how to receive revelation knowledge and operate in spiritual discernment. These powerful truths will help you win every battle and advance into the next level God has for you. Operation 10 City is a 10 city campaign empowering communities of people across challenged metropolitan cities throughout the U.S., restoring hope, providing resources, and imparting entrepreneurial education. Operation 10 City features a free mega event with programming for you and next generation leaders, business owners, and entrepreneurs centered on community outreach, business and entrepreneurship, and faith. Operation 10 City has impacted thousands to date in St. Louis, Detroit, Cleveland, Los Angeles, Philadelphia, and Chicago. With a singular vision to inspire people and communities to access true economic prosperity and self-sufficiency through wealth building and ownership. It's a lot of single parents like myself that's doing everything by themselves, and this actually is a big help. In these days and times, the way it is in this world today, it is very hard. You know, and people are doing what they can to take what they have to make it. Some of us are like swamped in bills and in, in property taxes, and, and um, this is excellent. Um, we appreciate the blessing. Today I am here because I would love to expunge my record. I have made several mistakes at a young age. Me having my record expunged will be the most powerful impact in my life because I plan on getting my CDL so I can be a truck driver. I have a future. This little misdemeanor been holding me back. I've been wanting to go to work like everybody else all my life, right? 30 years. You mean to tell me and I could come in here and give a fingerprint and I'm free? I'm free, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
Hi, I'm Robert Alexander Cager, and I just won $10,000 here at Operation 10 City. I'm Rio Wilson for Cutting Edge Global, and the church just won $20,000 here at Operation <laughs> 10 City. Yeah. If you're the most informed person on a topic, wealth will find you because someone will need you to do something only you can do. And you're going to expand, you're going to grow. There's a difference between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. God has created in you the capacity and the power that you are priceless. And what we want to do is to be able to unlock that power so that you can begin to ignite the vision and the destiny that God has already preordained for you. I believe God gives us all, all something. My gift was this recipe. When I became the first minority supplier for Denny's, how I did that was I was very perseverance, and I believe that is very important. And I'm here to let you know that anything the mind can conceive, as we know, can manifest through hard work, perseverance, and faith. You're going to be 10 times better than the best that the world can produce. This is your seat. The vision is when you see on the inside versus what you see on the outside, and you chase it. That God is a part of every area of my life and things that I do. He wants to make sure you're always on the right track. You give God access to all your life, not just part of it. When I came here, I felt the presence of God. It was so powerful. When praise and worship started, I just felt the anointing. And if you're looking for change and you just want to change your life, this is a place to come when they come to your city. This is your day. I, no, no, this is your day. This community need help, and a lot of people need uh, help with food, sweaters. The economy has gotten so uh, expensive. Even on, I'm on a, um, a Social Security, and just to buy my food now, I've been going to dollar stores and stuff like that. This is a great blessing. It it impacts me because I try I travel to I travel to work by bus, so I come from one one end of the city to the other. So okay, I catch two I ride two buses and I leave extremely early, and them being out here and handing out Uber and gas cars, that really helps me. May God continue to bless everything that you do. I mean, get a little emotional, but I want to say thank you. Well, I just thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for coming to Detroit to help us heal the community. Thank you. I am excited about what has occurred here today. And I want to thank you for the extremely um, well-trained volunteers that you sent to love on this community. I can tell you that many people have told me what a blessing it is that you've done this. Gas cards have been incredibly excellent. Lyft cards and Uber cards, along with groceries and free clothing, not just any clothing, but brand new clothing for folks who would have otherwise not been able to even do it you don't know what we've been through here, but I feel extremely blessed, and I just want to thank you. Thank you, Living Word, Dr. Bill Winston, and Operation 10 City for what you've done for this city. Now remember, you need faith to get to your destiny. So don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our videos. This is Bill Winston. I love you and keep walking by faith.